Corsair's new LL series hydraulic bearing fans feature excellent airflow, quiet operation, and powerful lighting with 16 independent RGB LEDs across two separate loops. Available in 120 and 140 millimeter sizes and controlled by Corsair's Lighting Node Pro, LL series fans can give your system a distinct and customizable look. Click the link in the description for more information. Excellent! Hey guys, how's it going and welcome to Paul's Hardware. This is my first video of 2018 and I'm actually off to a bit of a slow start this year, mainly because I started the year off by being sick. So sorry if I'm still a little bit congested, but this coming week is CES 2018. I've been going there for the past uh, seven, eight, nine years. I don't know how, how long I've been going to CES, very long time. But it's always exciting to go to CES because it's in Las Vegas. There's lots of new technology. It's a great way to kind of get a feel for the new products and stuff that are going to be coming out in 2018. So stay tuned because I'm going to have a full week of coverage coming at you guys next week as soon as I make my way out to Las Vegas. And if any of you guys happen to be there and you see me around, uh, feel free to say hello. Other than that though, we are of course going to be editing videos while we're in Las Vegas. So to that end, I am once again constructing a video editing PC that we can take on the road with us over to Las Vegas to get all these edit videos edited in a timely fashion. Now the first thing you guys might notice is that uh, this is an Intel based system. This is the RG Strix C370-i Gaming. For most of the parts that I'm using today, I was just sort of scrounging stuff that I have available here in the office. Uh, this is actually one of my only Mini ITX motherboards, and of course I need a Mini ITX motherboard because I'm reusing the famed and infamous and very difficult to find uh, Corsair Graphite 380T case. Not very good for taking uh, if you need to fly somewhere, but if you're able to carry it via the handle on top, very convenient case to have and uh, I like it. It's the white version. Uh, in that, we're gonna put the motherboard and if any of you guys are saying, hey Paul, why aren't you going with a Ryzen build for this? Because Ryzen has a little bit higher core counts and a little bit higher raw CPU performance available on it. The fact is I don't really have a mini ATX Ryzen motherboard available to me right now. I, I put mine, the one, one that I had from Gigabyte in the system that I built for Rachel earlier this year. So that's where that is. So long story short, Intel based system, Z370 motherboard, and then the processor is gonna be, of course, the 8700K. For any of you guys who are worried about the, that I lost my 8700K, I found it. Yes, that's going in there. So six cores, 12 threads, just slightly less than what we could get with a Ryzen 8 core 16 thread system, but still should get the job done just fine. Now we're gonna need a nice storage array configuration here. So I got the 960 Pro from Samsung, 512 gig. That's gonna have the operating system, Adobe Premiere and uh, basic files on it. For additional storage, we got a Toshiba TR200 SSD. This is a 480 gig version of that. So that's probably gonna act as a scratch disc and for uh, additional assets and that kind of thing. And then I've got a SanDisk Ultra 2. This is a one terabyte SSD. So this is where uh, raw footage is going to go. So that should give us a nice assortment of drives, uh, lots of storage and different drives to put different things on, which is very helpful when you're video editing. Uh, and I have the 1070 Ti here. This has been used in just a few recent builds that I've done here on the channel, but this is EVGA's GTX 1070 Ti. It's a fairly small uh, GPU, so that's one of the nice things about it. Good cooler, and uh, I did have some GTX 1080s around, but I, I couldn't find them, so this, this will get the job done just fine. For video editing, you also want as much memory as possible, so I got the Corsair Dominator Platinum DDR4 3000 kit. This is a two by 16 gig kit, so even though we've only got two DIMM slots available on our motherboard over here, uh, we are still gonna have 32 gigs of memory, which should hopefully be enough for Joe as long as he doesn't get into his after effects editing or anything like that. Yeah. All right, never mind. <laughs> to cool the CPU, we've got the CryoRig H7 Quad Lumi. Sorry, it's it's in its unboxed state right now because I just pulled it off of another system, but um, that'll keep our CPU nice and cool, the 8700K. Probably not gonna do too much overclocking or anything since it already runs at a pretty high frequency. And then of course the 380T case. So there are our parts. Let's assemble this, get it all put together so we can start loading it up and preparing it for CES.
It definitely helps when you're building a system if you've already built that system before. I've used several of the components in here internally and a few other systems just recently, and we realized that this build is actually pretty much a recreation of the build that we did about a year ago for CES uh, 2017. So it's got upgraded hardware in there, of course, and it still all fits in there. So there's been no changes to the uh, 380T from Corsair. So any of you guys who are still looking to pay uh, grossly overpriced prices for this, because if you look on eBay or whatever, they're like really expensive. Yeah, probably not the most practical thing, but there you can see our car rig H7 in there. Uh, we get a little bit of RGB accents, although that wasn't really the goal uh, from the motherboard as well, so that's nice to have. Uh, other than that, there's actually plenty of room still in there. This case is made to support some amounts of water cooling, and there's even a radiator bracket that you can see right here on the side, although we're not making use of that going with a strictly uh, air-cooled system. In the front, you got the intake fan. And then over here where this side goes on uh, will be the, intake, the side intake for the uh, graphics cart. Now with this powered on, it's actually very quiet. Um, not doing any scientific tests right now, but just anecdotally, quite quiet. And of course, uh, the EVGA GTX 1070 Ti we're using does have uh, the zero fan mode. So um, since the GPU isn't warm, the fans aren't spinning. I was able to put two of the SSDs, our 2.5 inch SSDs, right down here in the little caddies that it uh, goes with. And then uh, we did add a four terabytes WD red drive. Uh, that was sort of a late addition. Also neglected to mention the power supply for this build, but it's the EVGA 650 GQ. Uh, also been used with uh, several different builds that I've done just recently, but thankfully, although we were very limited on uh, front to back space, it's really crammed up against the drive cage right there. Uh, I pre-installed all the uh, modular cables so we had everything connected that we needed to and then was just able to wedge it up against there and still had enough space to route around the rest of the cables. The last thing we discovered as we were putting this together is that um, the motherboard, the RG Strix Z370-i Gaming, actually did already have a Samsung 960 Pro NVMe SSD, 512 gig even, pre-installed. I, I didn't forget that that was in there, I totally knew that was in there the whole time. Um, so we left that as is and that will be our operating system drive. So. Last thing to do is just pop the side panels back on here and then of course get everything loaded when it comes to Windows and Adobe Premiere and any other software we need. Maybe some games too. This would be a good gaming system. And guys, that's gonna wrap it up for this build video. This has been my build for editing at CES 2018. Uh, very similar to my build for editing at CES 2017, but very nice to have a portable case like the 380T from Corsair so we can haul it over there since I will be driving. Anyway, if you guys are gonna be in Las Vegas next week and you see me around, definitely say hello. Thanks to all you guys who have watched this video and who have subscribed to my channel in 2017. Got a lot of stuff coming for you this year. So stay tuned, hit the thumbs up button on your way out, and we'll see you next time.